Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hi hey guys, we're just going to carry on kind of the previous podcast, which hopefully you'll have seen a few days ago. Um, and we've sent in some questions for Tony and hopefully you can get some good answers to these. Um, let's start with, we've covered some of these already, Tony, but we'll just kind of highlight some of the questions that people have been asked. Um, so I'm passionate for everything BRFC on Twitter asked if the aim of Blackburn Rovers Academy teams to play the same way as the first team going forward. And um, obviously we kind of finished the interview on that, but if you just want to kind of recap what, you, what your thoughts are on, on whether the academy teams, especially even, even the lower age groups, do they even copy the same sort of style that we play in the first team? Yeah, 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 hundred percent. I think I think that's vital for any academy, but it's certainly it's certainly absolutely key for us. You know, having a real understanding of what what the manager wants in terms of his players and developing and, and, and systems. And you know, whenever the first team tweak the system, we we'll we'll do that here with our under 18s and the 16s and 15s. You know, we, we'll tweak the system so that the players get a feel for that. And if it changes up at the top again, we'll tweak it. We try and give the players, you know, experiences in terms of development around different different systems and formations because they can change at any time, but the key principles never change. So we'll always want to play out from the back, whether it's under nines, under 20, it doesn't matter. You know, we want to get the ball, we want to play, we want to keep possession, we want to be good on the counter-attack. We want to have creative players who take chances, take risks in the right areas, and they're encouraged to do that. They're going to make mistakes, but they're encouraged to do that and learn from them. Um, and then out of possession, you know, we, we want to be... Um, we want to be able to both press and, and be aggressive with the press or be patient and be, you know, be able to defend in a block and defend in different ways. So our, our players will get experience of all of these different things so that hopefully when that day comes and the, the transition up to the 23s and then into the first team, that they, in terms of their tactical understanding, they've got a good idea of what, what's expected in different scenarios and also technically they can, they can deliver at that level for whatever the manager will want them to do. Yeah. Um... I've got one here from Joe Harvey, just on specifics, really. Has yeah. the, so we talked about, you just mentioned there about players being able to provide, provide what they need to be able to do in the first team. So Joe asks about fullbacks specifically. Um, has it changed significantly given the rise of attacking responsibilities given to fullbacks in modern football? Yeah, yeah, it has, I think. Definitely, we, you know, we had a discussion about this this morning as well. I think the modern... Modern football now, I think, you know, it's it's about all about attacking attacking fullbacks. I mentioned, you know, the best teams in the world are, are the best at it. Um, and in terms of how the best teams play, it, it's sort of you look at the manager here and how we want to develop players in the academy, it's all it's all aligned. They've just got world class players uh, doing the same things. I think modern fullbacks, it's all about being athletic, being quick, being able to get in the final third, be able to create assists. You've got to be able to get good crosses into the box regularly, you've got to be able to chip in with the odd goal. 1v1 defendants part of it. I'd say 10, 20 years ago, that would have been absolutely fundamentally the first and most important thing and being a defender. Now it's part of it. You've got to be an all-rounder. Um, and I think all of our, like I say, in terms of the academy, all our, when we play in games, all the focus is on getting fullbacks high, getting fullbacks into attacking positions, being organised behind the ball for counter-attacks and stuff like that. But, you know, you look at our fullbacks now when they are all, they, they can all get up and down. They can all, compete 1v1 with the ball as well as without. Uh, I think that's probably been the big shift. I think, like you say, 10 years ago, 1v1 without the ball was key with the ball. As long as they could pass it, that was all right. Now you're looking for a lot more than that from your fullbacks in terms of attacking the opposition. Yeah. And so moving on to kind of a, a different type of player, the how important is character slash personality compared to just kind of being able to play football? Um, you mentioned there about facing adversity at, Bradf um, at Bradford when you got your pro deal kind of taken away from you and then with injuries as well. How how much do you kind of coach the mental side of things as well as physical? Oh, it's massive. It's a massive part of it. I think I think we're all psychologists in some way, you know, all the, and like I said, there's that many different staff now um, who, who work with the players and that it's key that all the messages are consistent and we've got that here. Uh, we're very good. We're lucky we've got two psychologists as well. Right. Uh, Andy and Laura, who were brilliant, who work with the players sort of one to one or in groups. So there's a there's a huge in the coaches, you know, the coaches a huge focus on 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 mindset and mentality. The, the journey from an academy player into 23s and then from 23s even into first team 
they're all huge, huge steps. Um, I think personality is important. I think character is absolutely massively important. We, these are things we discuss when we're talking about potential. You know, you're looking at a 15 year old and thinking, how far can this player get? So you look at his, his technical, his tactical, and his physical. But you know, the, the, the big questions again will come back to that mindset and mentality. How do they deal with adversity? What are they like in difficult situations? What's their perception of working hard? Mm. Do they work hard when no one's around watching them? Um, these are all things that contribute towards, you know, the potential of where a player can get to. And I think, you know, um, it's a huge, huge part of the game. I think social media now as well, there's a lot more scrutiny on players, you know, but there's also a lot more ego maybe with players as well, with followers and mm. all this other stuff that you're trying to sort of battle with as well. It's not about having a wash bag and a nice car. It's about playing the first team. About being the best you can be and winning games and playing a part in winning games and you know getting new contracts or getting the team into the Premier League or having Premier League clubs coming by you. So that drive, determination, and mindset's um, absolutely massively important. Yeah, that question was from Matt Moon. Sorry, Matt, I didn't credit you at the time. Um, Joe Harvey again also asked how important is it having the right coaches involved with the setup to youth development? And I won't just leave it there. You mentioned the psychologists. How, how important is it to have all the right staff? So not just coaches, but psychologists, medical, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's massively important. Massively important. I think, you know, we've got, we've got really good staff here across all the departments. The challenge, the challenge for us is keeping our best staff. That's been a that's been a challenge. Um, okay. we've, lost, we've lost a couple of coaches recently who you wouldn't you wouldn't want to lose. They've gone on to roles. To be honest, both 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 coaches have gone on to be heads of coaching. Yeah. So right. uh, there's something what something's working somewhere. But for me, from a from a selfish point of view, I want them here because they give our players um, the sort of best version of what we can give them. So I think and a big part of my role is developing the staff as well and. and helping them get better. And I think that's been a sort of constant focus of mine over the last three years. And, you know, we've, we've done really well with that. I think, like I said, it helps if you've got clear principles, clear philosophy, everyone knows what they're working towards and then they can build trust. Do you know what I mean? That they're not going to come in on a Monday and get grilled about why they've got beat 2-1. We're going to start talking about individual performances and stuff like that. And so having, having the right staff is really important. Having good staff is really important. Having staff who want to get better is really important. Having staff who want to be the best that they can be and, um, who want to progress here and stay here as long as they can is important. But obviously, when other opportunities come their way, you know, um, for me, the challenge is how do we keep them here? That's, yeah. that's the challenge. And that's something that is a, is ongoing uh, in terms of trying to keep those best staff in the building because they are difficult to replace. And in a performance environment, you know, if you've got someone who's really good and they leave, you've got to bring someone else in who may well be good as well. But then you've got to, it takes time then for them to adapt and get used to how we work and how they'll bring different things for sure. But again, you just feel um, if that happens too often, you can feel it's a one step forward, one step back type of thing. And we want to keep driving forward and, uh, mm. you know, improving and, and, you know, getting our players up and around that first team. So keeping the best staffs vitally important for us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Jonathan Secker asks, what does success look like for you guys? Success for us is, I'd say there's on a, on a couple of levels. It's, um, Ultimately, it's to get players into the first team, but get players into the first team who are the best players. Get players in the first team who can help us get towards the top of the league. Get players in the first team who the top teams want to come and buy. That's that's the ultimate success. That's why we're here from a from a club point of view. Then then the other the other part is to get players in and around the first team, get them debuts, get players, you know, go and have careers at other clubs. Um, if they're not quite good enough for us, let, let them leave here. And from their experiences here in the development, they're going to have a career somewhere else. And we wish them luck with that. Um, and we hope they do really, really well. And then the other thing is to, to try and develop them all as people. You know, during the time, you know, the academy lads, if they're here on a, you know, for the full journey, they're here a lot of years with us. And we want them, you know, in terms of their personality and the character and the things that they've learned um, during the time we're here, we want to make them, you know, better people and better prepared for life in football or outside of football. And, Hopefully the experiences with us will, will, will make them successful in whatever it is they want to go on and do. Uh, I'd say there's sort of three, maybe three different strands to it, really. Yeah. Ultimately, to get to get players in our team to to be the, you know, make us better and progress us up the league and into the Premier League. Yeah, I think it's vastly important that we're educating people as a holistic sort yeah, of thing. Absolutely. It's not just about football, absolutely. especially when they're coming in at eight, nine. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I say. Yeah, and and the other thing I'd say is again that probably underpins it all is we want to enjoy it 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We want every player who's either successful or not successful here to, to look back and think, you know what, that was great. I love being at Blackburn Academy. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, that's yeah, important. Definitely. Um, so we're going to last few questions, a uh, lot more sp specific to players. Uh, how much you can say, I don't know, but we'll, we'll, we'll ask the questions and then you can make your own mind up. Yeah, uh, first okay. one, you won't have actually maybe had too much to do with him, but... Joe asks, um, just how rare is it to find a 17-year-old like Harvey Elliott? Yeah, I think unbelievably rare. You know, um, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal talent. Great, great player. Great kid, you know, about mindset and mentality. He's uh, very assured, very focused, very driven, very resilient. All them key things we keep talking about. He's obviously technically brilliant. His awareness and decision-making at the top end of the pitch is first class. Um, and he's obviously worth you know, millions of pounds. He's a top, top talent. Um, when you're asking me how rare is it, I think if you look through all the leagues and say how many 17-year-olds are playing first-team football, he might be the only one at this at this level at Championship and Premier League. So um, a bit like Wayne Rooney, you know, at 16, he's, he's, it's very, very rare. Uh, obviously, Liverpool identified that talent while he was at Fulham, spent the money, whatever it took to get him out. And thankfully, thankfully for us and for him, I think, I think for him as well, coming to us with our manager, and, and, you know, Mark Venus and Damien Johnson, David Law, to work with them as staff will help develop him. He's got a platform of regular first-team football in the Championship. He's making the most of it. He's making us better. He's helping us um, get results and, you know, long may that continue. But to find to find one, you know, who can do that at 17 is extremely rare. But that's a challenge for us. We want to find our own. Um, that's that's what, you know, drives us, that passion and that. And, you know, we believe we've got a couple um, in the pipeline who might do that. I was going to ask, like, first of all, did he remind you of yourself? And second of all, uh, <laughs> I wish, I wish uh, <laughs> what effect did, does that have, having a 17-year-old on the current 17-year-olds that are in our academy? Because obviously they're playing under 18s on the 23 level. Surely they must look at Harvey and go, like, this is inspiration. Or did he look at it and go, I should be doing that? I think you've got you've got to look at it as, as inspiration, but you've also got to look at it as a realisation as well, because... Listen, if, what, what it tells you is if, if Tony Morbury thinks you're good enough, you're going to play. 17-year-old, if you're good enough, you're going to play. So it's it's not about, again, it comes back to mindset. It's not about weight and it's not about, you know, thinking, yeah, eventually it's, a you know, you've got to make the most of every moment. Now, you've got to probably do that from the age of 12, 13, 14 to be ready at 17. But for our lads in and around it, at 18s and 23s, they, they'll look at that and think, wow. He's 17 and he's in and, by the way, he's doing it week in, week out. He's playing to an unbelievably high level. Um, he does, he does, there's no excuses, no regrets with RVL. He goes on and shows everyone what he can do every time he steps on the pitch. So the challenge, I would say, is there for our own. So, well, that's that's the standard. You know, you, you've know, you got to be at this sort of level or you've got to try and get close to it to, to get opportunities. And if you're anywhere near it, you, you might get a chance because our manager, for sure, will give young players an opportunity. Now, from my point of view, is we've got to, they've got to go in and really grab hold of it, um, and some have done that, and some are still sort of we're still waiting for a couple to do that um, to the full effect. So, it's um, I think it's great, it, it, you know what I mean. For our own, it's a challenge, but it's also a realization that if you're good enough, our manager will give you give you an opportunity. Yeah, and they've got to step up to the plate. Yeah, it's going to inspire them really. Um, yeah. James Ruane on Twitter and also Tom on Twitter ask similar questions, so I'll just ask them both at the same time. Um, who was or is the most promising player you've worked with and who's been the best natural player he's seen to come through? He doesn't have to be Rovers necessarily, but... Yeah, I mean, I, if I talk about other clubs, Huddersfield is probably easier rather than name and name specifically. Here, I had um, at Huddersfield, there was Dwayne Holmes and Lewis O'Brien, who Dwayne Holmes obviously went out to Scunthorpe, then to Derby, and he's doing well there, and Lewis O'Brien's playing regularly for Huddersfield now. They were, they were two lads who were very different, but they both they're both technically good. They're both driven, um, and they both had a yard of pace more than other players, which makes mm. makes a big difference. Um, and they were both. They never got too excited. They never got too downbeat. They just basically got on with it all the time. And that in itself is a challenge, you know, with players. And that we, you know, don't, we've got some really really good players um, coming through. We've got some good players in our twenty threes, our eighteens, like I said, to your sixteens and fifteens. Some of them. You know, a lot of them we're really, really excited about. And, you know, there's, there's a few in there we think can play top, top level. So um, it'll be interesting in a couple of years' time. If we ever do one of these again, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you who they were and let's see where they are. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly, yeah. And hopefully they're playing for us in the Premier League. You know, that's 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 the, sort of the hope and the, the drive for us all to try and help them make that happen. 
Yeah, you've, you've kind of set your stall out here. So I don't think Reese and uh, Blackburn Rovers fan are going to get the answers that they want, but I'll ask the questions anyway. Are there any, uh, so Reese Cronshaw asks, are there any players you feel the club will let go too soon, i.e. releasing or selling on? And um, I'll expand that question a little bit. How difficult is it to make those kind of decisions throughout the years as well? Um, it, it, it's, all, it's always tough. I can only really speak from our time here. Um, and probably the honest answer to that would be no, really. Um, you know, I can't think of anyone that the clubs let go. Who, and again, listen, I, I'm one of them, mate. If we, if we, if we really to play, I'm, I'm desperate for them to do really well. And if they end up doing well and having a great career, I, for me, it's part of the journey. I think when you're assessing players and you're doing it, you know, in a council with a lot of people's opinions and that you can only make honest decisions in the moment based on all the information you've had over the period of time you've seen the player. Um, if they then move on and they do really, really well, then that, that's great for them. I've had a lot of experiences myself of that with having lots of different clubs and sometimes you, you know, change of environment, change, you know, challenge, being resilient. These are all things that mould you and, and, and take you on different paths and sometimes, but I, I can't think of, you know, any players who, um, I think the players who are in our first team are, are there for a reason. Mm. Uh, I think the players that we sold, if you're on about David, David Rea, for example, we sold for a reason, a great, you know, great package for the club, but obviously for De David as well. Uh, and the fact he wanted to go with, that becomes difficult to keep the player. And I think the players who are, you know, so no longer with us, uh, you know, again, that, that's happened for the right reasons. So, you know, hopefully we keep getting those decisions. Yeah. Know, uh, positive for the club um, but ultimately want what's best for the player as well you know sometimes opportunities just aren't there for them here but we know they'll do quite well if they get an opportunity somewhere else That that's football you know I think we do as fans like uh, thinking of Jack O'Connell here obviously it was before your time but when someone does well from Rovers Academy you still feel a little bit of pride about the fact that they've done the schooling here and it shows that we're, you know, we're doing something right when someone gets to the Premier League level and and you know he's been able to perform there. Unfortunately, injured at the moment. But um, yeah, so I don't think I don't think people really look back on it and be critical. I think people can say that oh, I wish we'd kept hold of him. But these decisions we know are made for reasons. So uh, yeah. just a final question then on on this one. Um, Blackburn Rovers fan. I doubt he's going to get an answer here. But who is the next big thing to come out of the academy? He gives a couple of examples. Uh, he mentions Gilson and, and Whitehall who are obviously two uh, talented players who've been playing 20, under 23 football this season and have done well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, I'm, I won't give specific names. I think, you know, the, especially the younger ones, the biggest bugbear, one of the biggest bugbears in football at the minute is agents who are trying to, you know, rip young players out of clubs yeah. um, for, for, for very little money for the club and huge profit for themselves that, you know, that we have a lot of agents who are circling around our players all the time. Um, 14, 15, 16, which is, I find, disgusting, to be honest. Um, and we've got some good examples of, you know, a lot of money being made by agents uh, ripping mm -hmm. off clubs. So I think in terms of talent, though, you know, the, the, the players that you've mentioned, we've listen, I, I could list a lot of players for a lot of different reasons. There's a couple in particular who, in my own mind, stand out a lot. Um, but again, it's that's not something I, I would sort of say. But I, I will tell you, Andy, in a couple of years, if... if uh, yeah. I'll write them down. I'll write them down, put them in an envelope. Put them in an envelope. Get, get out in three or four years' time and say, so there you go. But listen, let, let's hope as many of the ones that we, we believe in can, can, can push on and kick on and make a real impact in our first team and yeah. then hopefully move us forward. That, that's what it's we're It's been great to about. see the kind of the FA Cup youth team kind of transition into the 23s, as many of them that have done this season. And obviously the 23s are doing very well in terms of results and performances as well. In fact, some of the best performances have been in defeat. So... Um, like it's really good to see those players breaking through into that level and then like I said like Luke Brennan making the bench this season before going out on loan um, the final question I've got in terms of developing players is that loan system and we'll, we'll finish with this one yeah. um, I think Stuart mentioned trying to get a few out on loan in January is that still a plan that's in progress and how important do you think going out on loan is to getting these players to where we want them to be yeah I think um I think it's really important. I think, again, I'd look at it individually, to be honest. I think it's really important for some and it's it's not important for others. I think that's how, that's how we have to be. But I think in terms of the loans with 23s, you know, that that there's certainly lads we want to get out on loan and give opportunities to. Uh, and again, I'm, believe, I'm a big believer in it's, you know, we could sit and have a meeting and say, right, these four players need to go on loan. But 
why someone comes in for that player, that player, or that player. You've got to assess the opportunity in the moment. I mean, we had Sam Barnes as a second year scholar. He went along to Marine. Now, normally you would think, well, scholars don't go on loan, but for him, that was a great experience. He got player of the month in the first month. He struggled a bit in the second month. He found it tough. So he got two great experiences, the high and then the, go on then. Now you've got to deal with the challenge now of mm. being in that dressing room and it's tough. This is real. Um, you know, there's players who played a lot of under 23s game. Again, I, I'm not a big believer in collecting under 23s appearances. I think if you've played 100 games in the 23s and we're not, something's not right. Something's yeah. not right. A, because that player's getting too much of the same and B, because he's obviously blocking an opportunity for somewhere else if they're playing all the time. So again, it's, it's being proactive and, you know, looking at opportunities for players. And again, agents make it difficult because their perception sometimes of where they should be is different. The player's perception, believe it or not, can be quite different to where the opportunity will come. So if an under-23 player, oh, I should be playing in League One, but it might only be the National national League where you're going to get an opportunity. So you've got to sell that. And by the way, it's not easy in the National League either. No. Do you know what I mean? So, but yeah. this is part of the loans thing, that reality. Real football, hopefully we get crowds back in, which for me is a key thing alone. So you know you're playing in front of a lot more people normally. Mm-hmm. The challenge of that, there's normally a bonus on the win. Challenge of that, there's men in the dressing room who will let you know if you're not doing your job. That's important. Um, so I think for, for different players at different times, loans are massively important and it's hopefully something that we can keep um, developing our strategy with really so that we can we can keep being more effective with that. Um, and also, like I said to you, whenever anyone gets an opportunity to go on loan, someone else gets an opportunity to play here. So it's a, it's a, it's a cycle really of development that we've got to keep working hard to, to get as right as we can. Yeah, so it's all based on the individual and that's kind of the best way forward, like I say, we're we producing players. Um, so that, that's the key. Thank you for that. I think I've got through all the questions there. I'm sorry if I missed your question out, guys, but uh, I've asked as many as I could do in the time, really. So thank you so much. You've given us an hour of your afternoon there. It's been really appreciated. I hope everyone's got something out of it and uh, you can have a good rest of your, of your day. No, brilliant, Andy. Thanks a lot for having me on. And, uh, you know, anytime that's great. And best, best wishes for the new year. Let's hope it's a good one there Absolutely. for the first team and for us all. Same to everyone down Brock Hall. Hopefully all the players on staff have had a good Christmas and can can push on into the next part of the season, whatever it brings with uh, with the restrictions that we've got. So, uh, yeah, thank you again. And we'll speak to you again soon. And you can tell Brilliant. us who those players were in, in two years' time. I will do. I'll write them down, mate. I'll write them down. Brilliant. Cheers, Andy. Thanks yeah, a lot. Cheers. See you later. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods, including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.